This is Community During Chaos, episode 10, which means we have had 30 people. Well, after today, we would have had 30 people on this show in 10 weeks. And today, we are going live with D Swan, Bree Smiles, and Dayton. So this is going to be great. Every, every week we get together and we talk about what we can do in our communities and just how to be better and, and how we're coping and trying to spread positivity and encouragement during this time of chaos and a lot of negativity. So we're waiting for everybody to jump in. We've had Lecrae on the show. We've had KB. We've had D1. We've had Ruslan. We've, we've had Angie Rose. We've had a ton of great artist and today like i said we have d swan Bree smiles and dayton so let's get ready to go live with d swan who is up first uh we have d swan up next we have Bree smiles and then closing out the night we have dayton so my first question to you is with, with everything that's been going on with between covid and civil unrest and just overall craziness in this country um how have you been able to get through it and, and cope and and just you know be a light out there um, during this time like what's been helping me a lot is like being uh really grounded in, in the word of god um also like reading different like books that spiritually are like helping me in my walk and my faith also having uh yeah. check-ins like that was actually a New Year's goal of mine was to uh, this year in 2020 was to contact people more and check in and just see mm -hmm. how people are doing. It's um, important. And I did not know that we were going to have a pandemic like this. It really helped me to like them, like really do it like consistently and diligently. Um, during this mm -hmm. time, so um, things on that end has been dope. Um, serving at my church has been great. We've been doing the uh, the mobile market at my church, uh, Hope Church in St. Louis. Pastor Greg is a pastor, giving out free essentials, um, food, and awesome. to people, placing it, uh, just giving it for, away for free every Saturday. Uh, it's been great for doing that. Civil righteousness, my man JT, um, Freedom, my DJ. Uh, a couple other guys from the city, we all uh, will meet and do like different like prayer walls uh, in the city. It's awesome. Um, so getting with those guys and getting poured into is always like a great rooted thing. So that's how I've been able to like, like get through this time. And then just, like I said, um, checking in, definitely checking in with people because uh, a lot of us artists, we're getting hit heavy because of this, because a lot of our mm -hmm. income comes from touring and performing and things sure like that. yeah yeah so since we're not doing any, any of these things a lot of us started to like get into those lanes where we're like man lord i don't know how my next bill is going to come through and some mental things start playing with our heads but just trusting god through the process and trusting that he's going to take care of all our needs like he said he would according to his riches and his glory so yeah and i, I think it's important about this check-in thing because you think about yourself and you think about I, I know for me personally, during this time, every everybody's kind of like locked up, you know, away. No one's traveling. And you're like, man, like, I wish I wish I was around some friends right now. I wish I was around some family right now. Uh, you know, how come, you know, no one's checking up on me? And then it's like, well, why? How come I'm not checking up on anyone? Or what if the people that you think should be checking up on you are waiting for someone to check up on them? Um, so it, it's kind of like you kind of have to be have some sort of grace during this period to be like, yo, everybody is going through something. Um, and and, you know, we're in an unprecedented time. So just trying to reach out and, and say, hey, how you doing is is really important, even if it's even if you don't feel like it should be you that's doing that. Right. Because, you never because you don't know really what's what's really going on with people like. I I had a chance to like talk to people and found out like man like I got laid off my job bro yeah I'm like wait what I thought she was good you know and I got in conversations where I hit up people and say hey man are you doing okay just want to check in with you hearing like situations where people's like hey you know I got COVID and they became those mm -hmm. texts became prayer opportunities 
Right. You know I mean, and then vice versa. If I was going through something like, hey, I'm having a moment, like I, I need some prayer, bro. Like, can you help me at this time? And and getting that same energy, that same that same right, thing right. in return. And it just keeps uplifting each other, like at those times. Like that's what we're supposed to do as the as the body of Christ is help each other and uplift each other, and then share that same love to those who are non-believers as well. So yeah, um, just those check-ins, like man, it does a lot for sure. And you said you were doing a lot of stuff with your church and within your community. So for you, what has been the most, I guess, rewarding or or fruitful thing that you've seen come out of all of that? Mm, like, it make you appreciate the stuff, the little things. Like, mm. like, just wearing a face mask now. I appreciate when I don't have it on, when I'm at home and I can breathe air. I'm like, man, like, yeah. I can actually breathe air, you know, or just seeing people like just come through the prayer like through the lines to get food and they're asking for prayer and and we're hearing like man we didn't know how we were going to get our next meal and we wow. happened to be on facebook or we happened to be on ig and we saw that you guys were giving away all these essentials and you don't realize it helped me at that time or mm -hmm. i wanted to be a part of something that uh that's pushing the you know, crisis agenda and prayer and things like that. And I saw about your civil righteousness movement that you guys were doing in your city. And I wanted to be a part of that. Not even a Christian. There's people that came out there that are not even Christian. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. They became yeah. Christians because of that. That is, that is, that is an awesome thing. And that's been so fruitful for me is seeing people getting blessed during all this time. And God is just shining through all of this. That's that's been so fruitful, like to me, honestly. Yeah, no, that's that's amazing. Just seeing, you're you're basically directly seeing what you're doing impacting people. Which a lot of times, I know you make music, and the music, you you feel like it's going to impact people, but a lot of times you don't see that right until you meet them or you hear about it later or you hear someone, you know, years down the road. Oh, that song you put out five years ago changed my life, but it took you five years to to learn that. Well, as you're doing this and you see it immediately impacting people, it's like a whole new type of rewarding experience. True. It's a, it, you made a great point. Like that, us as artists, we we tend to like forget that. Like we are, we make yeah. we do make music that is there to uplift people, uh, encourage people, and things like that. And we forget that sometimes, like there's a season when that song may impact you um, in other seasons. Like when I mm -hmm. listened to Sweet Victory by Trip Lee, it was during the time when I was really trying to like understand my, like my call in my life. Like, Lord, like, I don't know what I'm doing, but during this time in my life, I'm going to trust you. I know I'm going to get this victory, even when it doesn't look like it, you know? Yeah. Um, and now when I hear it now, like, I love it, but it didn't, it doesn't have that same impact like it was when I was going through that season. Um, mm -hmm. So, yeah, that is so true. Yeah, I, I mean, it, it kind of that kind of just came to me as as, as you were talking about it, because I was just like, wow, it's an immediate, like almost like a gratification. Like the work that I'm doing right now is impacting someone right in front of my face um, rather than, you know, finding out about a stream. So I guess I guess for for you. You know, that's that's encouraging. What what are some things that have discouraged you during this time? Um, some of the things that discourage me a lot um, during this time is uh, the lack of unity that it should be. Um, mm -hmm. There is some things that I've noticed and I'm not saying this is for everybody, but from the little small mm -hmm area I'm from, there has been moments where I've seen people, you know, who before the pandemic was like, oh, we're about pushing those ag those agendas, we're about pushing this, the price agenda, blase, blase. Mm -hmm. And then when it's time for us to get our, our hands dirty and our feet dirty, no one's there to be found. They're not there. Yeah. 
And those things, those things are disappointing, especially for a person who happens to have a platform and God is using them and they're mm-hmm. not, you know, they're not stepping into what they're called to do. Not saying everyone's called to do the stuff that I mentioned or the things I mentioned or anybody is going to be mentioned later on. But um, when we have an opportunity to share the gospel, to show compassion, to pray for people, to show the act of kindness, mm-hmm. and we choose not to. That's a problem because we may be the only example or the only true definition of Jesus that to like the natural eye because people right like there's people that don't know Jesus at all and our lifestyle should be modified and being a, a leading example of that uh, how we, the, based on like the music we listen to the people we surround ourselves by. Mm-hmm. how we act how you know everything it should be based around jesus our whole path should be so if we're not doing those things people are going to see because real recognize real period yeah so people will notice that and, that and i've seen those things i know it's been kind of hard for it with covid and stuff but then there's some certain things that you can do like in my state where i'm from there's some restrictions that have been lifted where you could do you can do some things and some people, they choose to pick their the things they want to participate in, and, and I understand yeah. that. But if we are as Christian hip hop artists or Christian artists, our job is to be a Christian first, an artist second. So everything we do should be based around pushing Christ's agenda. If that means praying, checking in, um, participating with like handing out essentials. Mm-hmm. That means even going to a peaceful prayer pro- protest, whatever it is, anything that you do should be glorifying Jesus and and, ben- and benefiting the kingdom of God. So, right. And you you said you were doing like prayer walks during protests. You were part of that. Yes, it's a, it's a group called Silver Righteousness. Check okay. them out at silverrighteousness.org. Uh, my man um, Jonathan uh, Thomas, um, my man DJ uh, DJ Freedom, um, definitely um, those. We I've been able to participate in some prayer walks and protests where we're 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 out there praying and on one of the main streets in our city for uh, different things. Um, we be well, sometimes we'll uh, there's a, a been a moment where we're standing in front of the Ferguson uh, police station, which everybody knows Ferguson from Mm -hmm. when the Michael Brown thing happened. That's a small um, area within St. Louis. And, you know, we, you know, we had set up a prayer wall. We also recently, just this past weekend, we did a prayer um, on Martin Luther King uh, Boulevard in St. Louis. And then we ended the service with uh, a sermon and we did worship songs for the community. So uh, people sat on their porches and heard from us and everything like that. So those things like that makes a difference. I mean, what what would as as a younger artist like? What would you like to see younger other younger artists and some of your peers do with their platform and with their yeah, just with their platforms in general? Do you do you, do you like what you're seeing? Do you think people can do better? You know, how do you feel? Um, I want to give a shout out to like to some of the the upcoming Christian hip hop artists that are actually out there, man. I, I do see some of the posts um, mm-hmm. and I do see people going out like, uh, I'm just going to say a couple of names like Rockstar JP. Yep. Uh, my man, uh, Caesar Josh. Um, it's a lot of different individuals that have actually stepped out and did some things um, where they were, you know, getting their hands involved in their community because they want to see a difference. Um, Mm -hmm. and I do applaud them. Uh, I do feel like there's more of us that could get more involved, not, and and what I mean, get involved, I mean, really get involved and, and we're not just out here just taking pictures for the gram. Like we really doing it because this is what we're called to do and it's something we're passionate about, which there is a difference between people who are passionate about it and that's just out here just, you know, flossing. We don't want, we don't want that. Photo opportunist. Yeah, we don't we don't want you to be like old girl that was holding the hammer, like look like <laughs> the, the window, and then take the picture and roll out. 
No, we want we want to see you actually out there. You know what I mean? Because again, like going back to what I was saying, we want to make sure that we're you know leading by example, and we're being that example uh, to those who don't know Christ, and we're leading by our acts and our words and how we move. Right. And shout, you shouted out Zar Josh and Rockstar JT. I had both of them on the show, actually. Yeah. Uh, JT was on the first episode. I think Josh was on the, the third or the fourth. Uh, but yeah, those, those guys are, are doing a great job just being leaders in their community. Um, and you always see them, you know, on Instagram or on Twitter, you know, saying something, speaking out about something and using wisdom when they do it too. Uh, especially Josh. Josh is like, like a whole nother level. Uh, and it's his birthday today. So shout yeah, out, I shout out to you, earlier. Josh. For everyone who may be uh, tuning in and watching you for the first time, you know, where can they follow you? Where can they find your music? All that plug away. Uh, Twitter, Yo D Swan. Um, Instagram, Yo D Swan Music. Um, and you can uh, check me out on Spotify, um, Apple Music, all your streaming platforms. Definitely going to have a whole bunch of music coming out very soon. I see like there was like two questions that came up. and I, I Yeah, I, I see one. How do you respond to the division that may be going on amongst the body of Christ during the season? And how do we get into the right position where God wants us to be? So that, that's going to be your closing, your closing statement. <laughs> mm, that's a good question. Um, to answer that, I believe the division between the body of Christ during the season, how we fix that is getting to putting Christ as a center and not the religion. Because people get the confusion that religion is this. No, it's Jesus. That's it. And if we put <laughs> Jesus as the keep it, center, keep it simple. Yeah. As long as we put Jesus as the center of our focus, and make him the priority of everything that we do, we're going to have a better understanding and be, and draw uh, that unity. We may not agree with everything, and that's okay, but we would understand and come together to put our differences aside mm -hmm. to remember that our sole purpose is to get, you know, see Jesus again, and to be the fishermen of men. That that's it. So that I think that's that's the only way I can answer that question. I hope I answered the best. All right, man. Well, thank you so much for joining us. I appreciate you coming on. Uh happy to hear your heart and, and see what you're doing in your community. Keep at it. And uh, you know, stay in touch, man. Let us know what you're doing here over at Rabzilla and everybody go follow this man right now. Hello. What's up? Hey, what's up? Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Thank you so much for having me on. How have you been during all of this chaos? COVID-19, civil unrest, protesting, rioting, um, division in the country. There is a lot of craziness going on. Uh, how have you been making it through? So. <laughs> Kick it off. Kick it off. <laughs> I mean, there's a lot to say. Um, we're living in a very detrimental hour. And I think that for we we as the body of Christ, we need to take off what we see in the natural and we need to fixate our spiritual scope. And what I mean by that is, is that we're living in a very spiritual time right now. Mm -hmm. I know what the news says. I know what the government says. and I, But God has said something long ago. And if you know your word... <laughs> then you knew this was going to happen. And so the remnant should be using this time behind closed doors to refine and define who they are and what they represent in this hour. And that's exactly what I've been doing. Um, I've been sharpening my sword with the sword. Every day mm -hmm. I go into my word and I make sure that I'm harnessing a word to give to his people. You know, um, it says in the word that we are in this world, but we're not of this world. You know, mm -hmm. it's culture that we are indoctrinated by um, has been strategically assigned and designed to change the, the, the biological DNA of our psyche and infiltrate our psyche with Luciferian doctrine. 
and I can't give it to, I'm not a person that hits with, you know, little taps. Like I, I, I'm coming in for the blow. Now's not the time to um, play around. We need to call out the enemy for what he's doing and who he is so that we mm -hmm. can use ourselves to fight this battle, you know? So I am a woman um, in a, a, uh, a the authority that I've been given to as a woman, I call it the queendom. You feel me? We do <laughs> kingdom works, but I, I'm, a per I'm one of the ambassadors of queendom. And, um, you know, with, with trending topics like, uh, you know, like what that's going on right now, yeah. I'm a voice of the counterculture. Um, we have a lack of example of women that are calling things out for what they are, saying that's not right, <laughs> uh, it's not right, and um, speaking something, speaking a word of hope, of love and encouragement, especially to our young girls. Um, my heart bleeds for how yeah. the media indoctrinates the people. So there's a counterculture and there's a kingdom culture that is assigned to speak words against that because we know that we fight against principalities. We know that we fight against dark forces in the air, <laughs> in the air waves, you know what I mean? Designed to, to, to construct our thoughts and implant something in our minds and a demonic doctrine. And so things that I do and the assignment that I, that I have is, um, to be a culture soldier against culture vultures. You came in, you came in with the fire. I don't know if, I don't know if everyone was ready. Uh, I see, I'm, I'm going to skip right to somebody's question in here because it, it seems like a, a good question. How do you, oh, wait, I lost it right when I was about to read it. How do you know when and how to respond to certain trending topics on social media? Uh, and how do you know what's distraction and which to address? And I think that fits in perfectly with what you were just talking about. Absolutely. Um, the Lord, I'm okay. You asked me, so I'm gonna answer. <laughs> um, I only talk about what I know about, and I know a few things. You know, I don't know <laughs> but I know a few things. So this morning, you know, while I was getting ready, I always, you know, I seek the heart of the Father. Like, what do you want to tell your people, Lord? What do you want to say to these people? And, um, you know, I've been studying my word like crazy, bro. Like I've been in my word, like maybe four five, six hours a day. Um, it gives me peace. It not only mm -hmm. arms me, but it gives me peace. And the Lord told me to say this. And a lot of people won't say these things, but I'm gonna say it. So people think that the Bible is some type of like archaic manuscript that doesn't apply or that isn't relevant to today's culture and society. And that is a very um, deceptive misconception because we are, we've gone through this before. <laughs> we've gone through this before. So you gotta study it. And the reason why we're supposed to arm ourselves with the word is because history dictates, you know, where we're gonna go, where we're going in our future. You know, we have these demigods and we have these idols that we worship. And yes, we worship them. And but they've been around for a long time. Back, mm -hmm. in, the, back in, you know, back in the biblical days, they called them the bells. They called him. Um, they worshiped Moloch and they worshiped Asherahs. OK, I'll, we could talk about Moloch and Baal in another conversation. But right now I want to fixate and focus on the Asherahs. Asherah back in the Roman days and in the days of Nebuchadnezzar, they were poles that were erected and they were sex gods. They were fertility gods and they had carried a feminine energy. Actually, Jezebel, she worshiped the Asherahs mm -hmm. and they were in the form of poles. Right. When God had the apocalypse that hit Rome, it was because they had turned their hearts so far away from God. And they were so indoctrinated with pagan culture and with pagan religion.
detached from them. Even in Genesis 6, he sent the flood because their hearts were so callous and so evil and they did not reflect him. So sometimes he has to bring devastation to wake people up. And if you don't agree with that, you don't know your words. Sorry, that's just what it is. <laughs> so nowadays we have those Asherahs and they come in the form of Cardis. They come in the form of Nikki's. They come in the form of Megan's and we worship them. Yes, we do. I, you know what? I am, have been a youth leader for a really long time. Okay. Probably ever since I was like 14, 15, I was a youth leader when I was a youth leader. You know? Yeah. Uh, and I will tell you something. I was also a high school teacher at an at-risk high school. So I know this generation very well. <sighs> Let me tell you why they worship these. And, and if you you if you think that it's they don't, I'm gonna tell you something. Let me tell you something. These kids, they can't quote you one verse of scripture. They can't. Yep. They can quote you every single scripture of Nicki Minaj and Cardi B and Megan the Stallion. They quote it in their sleep. If that ain't worship, I don't know what it is. They dance to it. You feel me? We got a whole app dedicated to dancers. They worship mm -hmm. them. What is different from today than when it was when they were worshiping the Asherah poles? Now, now Asherah poles, they were, were erected as sex, sexual objects. Now we got, we are glorifying the stripper culture. How is it, how is it not the same? And culture and art and 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 empowerment i don't feel empowered when i watch those videos i feel objectified my heart is grieved my soul is grieved and the last time that i looked at you know i looked watched that music video and i cried bro and it made me realize who it made me realize the re why i do what i do mm -hmm. That's exactly why I do what I do. And it made, made me want to go harder because there was nine, like, I, I don't even know the number now because I have, I can't watch it. But there was like 9 million people had watched that video and it was like porn, pornographic images. That's what it was. And there was 9 million people that watched that. And we don't even know the, the ratio of that where that were young girls it molests the mind of the masses. It molests their mind. You know what I'm saying? It's like mm -hmm. this, this nation is being corrupted by lust. It corrupts the mind not only of our youth, but it's corrupting the minds of men. And it's corrupting. And that's why I'm, uh, my, my message is not popular. I don't care. I'm going to say it anyway. And any platform that I'm on, I'm telling you, I am a sword for the Lord. And when Jesus walked the earth, I'm telling you, he, conf he was a confronter. He was not just a comforter. He was a confronter of certain systemic issues that did not align with truth, but it was a part of their culture. And so because it was widely accepted, it was like, well, this is just how, no, 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 no. That's not just how we are. That's the reason why we're going through what we're going through today. God is upset. We reflect more the nature of Satan than we do at the image of God as a whole and as a collective. We are operating under a Luciferian doctrine, like under Aleister Crawley, do what thou wilt, meaning do whatever you want, do how much you want. No moral, no moral code, no conviction, desensitized to any type of moral code or moral barometer. And God has had enough. Say la. God has had enough. Say la. It's time. I'm telling you, it's time for the body of Christ to purify themselves so that we can reflect him in this corrupted system, this Luciferian indoctrinated system. And it's time for us to shine for him and him alone. And you've got to pick a side. You cannot be neutral in this warfare. You either fight for light 
or you fight for darkness, but you gotta pick a side. And if you're not as well, look, I, I, I'm fired up right now because I'm, I'm, a, I'm a media missionary. You feel me? That's my mission field. And it's the belly of the beast. And I'm, and I'm gonna tell you why. Um, we forget that Lucifer was the angel of culture. He was the worship angel. He knows mm -hmm. media very well. Okay. He has his degree in culture. Don't get it twisted. It says in the Bible that he had actual pipes and vines in his body that every time that he moved, he made a harmonious sound. He ushered in the presence of God every single day. And he saw through the power of music, how it influenced the atmosphere. And all of that, um, he was like, I have the ability to influence the air. And that's where he got his pride from. And there's nothing more blasphemous than thinking that you can be greater than your creator. When he got sent down violently, because he blasphemed God in the worst type of way, it never said that God took away his ability to create music. And it never said his, he took away his intellect on how to influence the atmosphere. He still knows how to do that. So why do you not think that he's doing it today? It is the most undetected weapon media. Okay. Our devices and our phones are the modern day tree of knowledge of good and evil. It's mm -hmm. so much so that there is a bitten off apple on the back of your phone. <laughs> you feel me? Because it's the portal to infinite information. And, but this is, this is my little caveat. You choose what you digest. You choose the content in which you consume. That's why it could either be used for good or it could be used for evil. It's time that we take media back. <laughs> it's time that we raise up this kingdom culture. And we, we got to do it knowing and being fearless, just like Gideon, when they, when they had the filter of the army, they said, everybody that's afraid, go home. Because <laughs> this fight isn't for you. You got to do it like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that even if this takes my life, I'm still going to proclaim the message that God has given me, that God is good, and I'm only going to serve him. That's the tenacity we have to go in this next hour, in this next season. God is tired of our duplicity. He's tired of our neutrality. He's tired of our lukewarmness. He's tired of it. It's not the time for that. We don't got time to waste like that. We don't. Now, now let me ask you this. Um, so you broke that down, like, incredibly. Even, even the, the Apple... The Apple flip on the phone, that was very uh, rapper metaphor of you. Um, <laughs> that was awesome. But for, for you, where, where is the line drawn? Like, is there media, could there be popular media that, that doesn't glorify Satan, but also doesn't glorify God? That's a good question. Um, I say, I would, all, I would go back to the source of the intention of the creator of that source. What is your intention? Because mm -hmm. anything that you subject into the air is a seed that's gonna be implanted into the mental. And seeds, they, their, na their nature is to grow. <laughs> so if that's, you're gonna be held accountable for the seeds you sow, whether good or bad, say law. So anything that you sow into the mm -hmm. atmosphere Whenever that gets in ingested, it digests. So if you're, if you're a content creator, be aware of what you're creating because you are creating a seed for the soul. And you're going to be held accountable for the seeds you sow. <laughs> Plain, line, and simple. Yeah, and, and I think it, it kind of gives you room to get pushed to a certain way because how many artists do you see come up very innocent very kid friendly like you think about a, a a young taylor swift or even a young miley cyrus coming out as innocent little girls and then as they went along they got raunchier they got you know heavier like and just they just continue to like go on that 
on that upward trajectory. Um, so yeah, even the most innocent things tend to get flipped into, into awfulness uh, because that's just kind of the expectation. Oh, they'll, they'll grow into their sound, meaning, oh, they'll grow into what's popular and what everybody wants to see. Um, and that's, that's sad. Well, you have to realize that the, the Satan is the master of deception. He mm -hmm. is the counterfeit of everything that God is naturally. So God is the God of truth. Then the enemy is the master of deception there um, for every single pop idol that you see. You know, I study music business in L.A. I was in I lived in L.A. for six years. So I, I've seen the industry. I've seen the inside of, mm -hmm. of the industry. I've seen a lot of things. And that's why I only make music for the Lord now. Yeah. Um, but there is a there is an agenda for every single um, pop idol, demigod. I'm gonna call it what it is, pop idol, demigod, Asherah that you see today. <laughs> and I, do you know why there? When you sign a contract, I took a, a contracts class um, for music business and music law. So in music law, there is a, a clause in a, in a contract when you sign to a label and it's called name and likeness clause. You know, there's a lot of people that say, oh, you know, when you go out, when you make a certain amount of money or whatever, you sold your soul to the devil. Okay, whatever. Your soul's not your to sell. God ultimately dictates where your soul goes. But what mm -hmm. you can sell and what is as powerful as selling your soul is selling your image. Right, your that likeness. That has a price tag on it. You know why? Because when God created you, he created you to be the image of God. Now, when you sign that clause of name and likeness, you sign your God-given image away to a system. And now they have designed and orchestrated a image that they want you to reflect. And let me tell you, it is anything and everything but godly. Take a look at what. That's mm -hmm. what happens when you sign your image away. You become a modern day Asherah, point blank, period. Now, do you think things like this are here? Well, obviously I know the answer is that these things are a distraction to what's really going on in the world. But when you see things like um, the civil unrest and the protesting and then rioting that happens and then the, the arguments about police brutality and, and all these things going back and forth and how, how that plays in the media. Yeah. What, are your, what are your thoughts on that? A divided house will not stand. That's what I think about that. The system wants to create divisions within the body to keep us dislocated for, from operating as one. Let me tell you something. When, when the body... Got to get, let me give you an, in, let me give you an instance of when the body operated as one and in the Bible, the, the people got together and they wanted to build a, a tower to heaven. It was called the tower of Babel. Tower of Babel. Yep. And God said, I have to distort their tongue because when they come together and when they put their minds towards something, there is nothing they cannot do. There are more of us than there are the elitists, these Luciferian ran demon possessed elitists that run our country and our world. There are more of us than there are of them. This time, say law has been taken out for those elitists to be exposed for what they are and what they are doing and giving us time to refine ourselves so that we can con conquer the powers that be, but mm -hmm. we cannot do this divided. Right. We are one body. We are one blood. The pigment in your skin is just um, wherever you were geographically placed in the beginning of time. It was, uh, there was a certain amount of melanin in your skin to be able to handle the geographic sun that was in your region. That's yeah. it. And the system took that and they say, we can create division with that difference and they have and it's we crazy. bought into it 
We bought into it. Racism is one of the biggest scams ever placed on humanity. Not saying that there isn't real trauma and there isn't real history behind all every type of it pains me. I'm not I'm not dismissing that at all. What I am saying is that they have created racism to be a division in the body to keep us divided so that we don't stand as one to defeat them. They are afraid. Let me tell you something. They are afraid what happens when the body stands and moves. Mm -hmm. Someone said, uh, we better be recording this. This is recording. This is live. <laughs> this will be, this will be posted uh, right on the Instagram after this. And then I edit it and it'll be a podcast. It'll be on Facebook. It'll be on YouTube. On. You can watch this. You can watch this anytime you want. That's what it is. And in the beginning of soldier, I say, um, we're all brothers underneath the skin. You know, it says in the Bible that uh, men judges by the outward appearance, but God looks inwardly at the heart of a man. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I bleed the same color red as you bleed, brother. I bleed the same color you bleed, sister. They want us divided because when Jesus was here, he said, I have come to make them one. It was one of his missions. They've been struggling with this forever since the Jews and the Gentiles. They've been struggling with this. You know what I mean? But when we, we call out the enemy for what he is and what he's doing to the people, he's exposed. That's how we're able to fight back. Now, I, I heard that you also do a lot of street ministry and that you're, you work in, in Compton. Is it? I've, I've done I've done street ministry all over Cali. So like everywhere. So, um, yeah, I've done it in Compton. I've done it in my home city. There's a lot of homelessness in my home city. So mm -hmm. I've uh, fed the homeless in my home city uh, street ministry out here. Uh, I uh, I'm, I'm very much about being with the people. Looking them in their eyes and, you know, relating and empathizing with their hurt because I know who I am without God mm -hmm. and I, there's nothing cute about my innate nature. I go hard for the Lord because of what he's done for me. Like Paul, I've had a real encounter with him and his transformative work. I know what he can do. I was, <laughs> I never judge anybody on the street. I never judge anybody that's addicted to drugs. I don't I don't ever judge anybody that's addicted to alcoholism. I don't I don't judge nobody for for none of those shortcomings because I, I I've been there and I was only a couple of decisions away from being that homeless person, from being that crackhead, from being I was only a couple I was only I know my nature. Mm -hmm. The only thing that keeps me aligned and aligned is the Holy Spirit. And I want people, if God can do it for me and if he can do it with Paul and if he could lead a whole spiritual revolution the way that he did with Paul, you know, um, to, and Paul stood up and was like, yes, I, I am that Pharisee that killed Christians for a living and I love to do it. And actually, the government's the one that hired me to do it. I am that man. However, I had an encounter with God. It wasn't in the form of religion because he was one of the most, he was considered one of the most religious um, teachers and learned ones of the time. So it didn't mm -hmm. come via religion. It came via encounter. We don't need another religion, bro. We don't need, sermons are great and they're, they're there to get, you get fed by them. But what we need is a real encounter personally. And let me tell you, the, what, let me tell you, everybody that's listening now and that will listen, God wants to have an encounter with you, a real one, not via tradition, not via your grandmama, not via your pastor, not via your religion, not via none of those things. He wants to have a Damascus experience with you. I don't care where you, where you are. Paul was on his way to kill Christians. That was his mission. So don't ever judge somebody's road because you don't know what God is taking them to. He had a, an encounter with the Lord on his way to kill Christians. 
you know? And so like, just pray for these people, people are in our media, people that, you know, have massive amounts of influence that you don't always agree with or what they're doing, whatever. I pray for Megan. I pray for Cardi. I pray for Nikki because I believe, I don't believe anybody's outside of the reach of our heavenly father. Mm -hmm. And I believe this is what I believe. I don't know what you believe, but I believe that my God is capable of all things. I believe that God wants to save the trafficker. I believe that God wants to save those people in high places of government. I believe that God wants to put a revival on the people in something that we've never seen before. We're living in a time of, of the impossible becoming possible. <laughs> We're all on quarantine. We never saw that being possible. Yeah. So don't put limitations and impossibilities on our limitless eternal father. This next season, we're about to step into something that we've never seen before. Miracles, signs, wonders, but you got to believe that it's actually going to happen. And then when you are a believer that God can actually do that, that's when he uses you to do it. You, you kind of got started on my last question for you, but maybe you could expound a little bit. I was going to ask you, out of all of this craziness of 2020, now heading towards a new year, what are your hopes and dreams and your prayers for 2021? Um, I'm ready for kingdom come that will be done. What I mean by that is during the darkest time is the perfect time for light to shine. During the darkest time is the perfect hour for kingdom to shine, is what I want mm -hmm. to say. Um, God, this this had to happen in a lot of ways. No, no, I mean, I'm not, oh, not always, you know, mm -hmm. something had to happen because of where we were going as a people. Um, we our our conviction was desensitized. We were becoming apathetic as a church. We were we were more committed to our religious routines than we were to actually seeking the heart of God. Our people's the churches and the minds of people are open in a way they never seen before. They can't trust their government. They can't trust their people of authority. They can't trust none of them suckers. You have to seek God if you want truth. He's the only one that has it. So it's giving us a desperation to seek him again, authentically. So mm -hmm. 2021, look, the army of the Lord, stand up and rise up because I'm going to speak prophetically to you right now. Those who are faithful and obedient, God is going to promote you into places like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego that did not bow to culture. They did not bow to government and they did not bow to systems. He used them for their stand while everybody else is bowing, he used them and put them and po po uh, promoted them into places of power, position and authority into the government, into worldly, worldly systems, because everybody was like, I cannot deny that you serve the one and true God. Mm -hmm. That's what I expect in 2020, 2021. Yes. 2021. And before I let you go, because this this was insane, this was amazing. Amen. Does any can, can we? Does anyone have like one really good question to end off with Breon before we before we get to Dayton? And for everyone who's just tuning in, uh, this is Community During Chaos. We've had D Swan. This is Bree Smiles, and Dayton is coming on after every week. We we speak about how we can do better and be positive influences and come up with solutions in our communities and. Uh, and Bree is laying it on everybody right now. Um, and it's, inc it's incredible. I, I just threw out my questions and I'm just letting her go. <laughs> so does anybody, does anybody have a question uh, to end off on before we go to Dayton? Okay, let me shout out Ryan Lamar. Let's, let's talk about the music for a minute. Uh, Dozen Crows, I just dropped Dozen Crows. Um, it was, it, it was, everything was done by Red Gorilla Entertainment. Mm -hmm. um, the dream team that happened it was totally d god divine and orchestrated so red gorilla entertainment they shot the visuals the studio everything was red gorilla entertainment you guys are amazing um ryan lamar he shot and directed the music video uh, red gorilla entertainment then partnered with uh amplify uh, empire 
and it was a dream team. So, uh, yeah, I, I was extremely honored and grateful uh, that God sent me those kingdom architects to build the movement of Doves and Crows. Yeah, I love I love Ryan. Um, okay, here's Ryan's question, and this will this will be your closing statement. So, how is God using your ministry to push the word, and how are you sounding the alarm? By being unapologetic in truth. Um, I know I know the the need for truth in a in a deceived society. I have spotted the enemy for what he's doing to the minds of our young people and the minds of the masses. And I'm calling him out. I, I'm in warfare every single day. War, because you have to realize that God is battling for your soul. But so is Satan. Don't get it twisted. This life is a mere vapor. We have an eternity that awaits us outside of this life. Where will your soul go? That's what Doves and Crows is all about. At the crossroads. We know another song, meet you at the crossroads. It's the same thing. When mm -hmm. you're at, at the crossroads, will you see doves or crows? Where is your soul going? You know, and not a lot of artists are, are willing to call things out for what they are. So I'm apologetic in um, being a warrior for the Lord, a sword for the Lord a culture soldier, and I'm going to do it until the death of me. Jesus is going to be on my lips. I can't be bought by the system. I don't have a price tag. My image will always reflect the Lord, no matter what platform he puts me on. And that's just what it is. Where could everybody find you, follow you, listen to your music? Oh, okay. Real quick. Um, so link with me. I know I'm like, I, I, I'm, I'm like growling right now or roaring right now, but I swear <laughs> I'm a nice person. Um, link with me, uh, Bree Smiles. That's B or Bree underscore smiles with a Z underscore. And that's where all the links to everything's at. So yeah, connect with me. I love connecting with people. All right, Bree. Thanks so much. This was great. Thank this you, was, man. this was a good, this was a good first, first time talking to you they always say first impressions i got a first impression this was good awesome thank you so much for having me on i don't take these uh these platforms or these discussions lightly so thank you no thank thank you for bringing it and yeah. and staying and staying real i appreciate you appreciate you man have a good night bye bye yo yo son i don't even know why we gonna do this she said <laughs> everything that that you could possibly say, drop mic, it's over with, bro. She killed that mug. Yeah, but you're a freestyle champion, so you should come up with oh, some. Nah. You should come I, up with some other things. I'm really, I'm watching her. I'm like, yo, what's left to say? She said anything, bro. But I know that was that was amazing. I was like, I told Dayton 9:45, but I see him watching, so I know, I know he's gonna be all right with this when we go when we oh. go late. <laughs> yeah, I was thoroughly entertained and blessed by it, bro. It was amazing. So for, for everybody tuning in, for, for everyone jumping in on Dayton's Live, uh, my name is Justin. I'm here with, I'm the editor of Rapzilla. This is Community During Chaos. Every week I speak to three different artists about what they're doing in their communities, trying to be leaders, coming up with positive solutions and answers during this chaos and craziness that's going on in the country and around the world. And Dayton is guest number 30 on this show. A nice, hey. a nice round number. Nice even so, number. So with everything that's been going on from, from COVID to civil unrest to, to uh, protesting, uh, rioting, um, political craziness, you know, how have you been using this time to, to just get through life? Man, uh, I'm trying to figure everything out just like everybody else is. I ain't got the answer, mm -hmm. Sway. But, uh, uh, you know, it's uncomfortable. <laughs> it's different. Um, when this, this has revealed to me that sometimes habits, like you can, you can get into a swing of doing ministry. You can get into a swing of your daily routines and routines. I should use that word. Routines mm -hmm. are, are a need to be broken and, and you need to relearn how to do things sometimes. So a mm -hmm. lot of my routines from ministry to how I function day to day is, has been disrupted and ruined. So I'm just trying to figure out new ones. You know what I'm saying? I'm talking about all the way down to eating yeah. habits, working out. How how do I, now that, you know, I'm a street minister, I'm used to traveling and right. be, getting flown in to be a part of other people's ministries to, to help. 
to contribute, to sow seed, to minister. Now that that's stripped away, what do I do? Do I sit on my hands or do I, you know, you would think that with all of this extra time, um, I heard Bree say like, yo, I've been in the word five, six hours a day. God bless her. I have the time to be in the word five, six hours a day. I find myself struggling with being more distracted than ever with more time on my hands because that routine has yep. been stripped away. Yep. No, I get that. And yeah. I know, I know that you just from knowing you personally, I know that you're someone who, who doesn't like to stay silent on things. When, when anything comes up, I see anything that pops off on Twitter or Instagram or something. And I was like, Oh, here comes Dayton. He's coming in. So, so with, with everything going on, how, how do you make sure that you're of, you know, the right state of mind to comment on these things and try to be a leader in the community? Well, uh, um, my answer may not be satisfying to everybody. Um, <laughs> first of all, I take this stuff personally because I have myself experienced police brutality. It's a trigger for me. You know, it's like uh, my PTSD kicks in when I see it, right? So me being a Puerto Rican from Newark, New Jersey, right? On the East Coast, when I've traveled outside the East, I see it's not like this. But where I'm from, mm -hmm. I'm on the same block with Black kids and with some Dominicans. We grow up together. There's no difference. We all say the N word. We all do the same thing, shot the same places. There's very, there's a couple of areas in the city that are mostly Puerto Rican, are mostly Dominican, are mostly black. But where I'm from, North North, it's all integrated, all blend, mm -hmm. blended. So not only have I experienced it, my black bros have experienced it right in front of me. So when I, it, as this, started to go on and as i started to speak up i would be met with resistance from my white followers and my black followers like you ain't black so mind your business mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying or why do who wants to why is your voice valuable and then you know just to be flat out i'll go click on their page to see what they're talking about and it's like a freaking suburb black dude and all his pictures he's with a bunch of white kids in the college like yo fam you're we're from two different just because you're african american yeah, yeah just because you're african american you ain't you ain't been where i've been so for that for, because of those things it's been frustrating to me so i have to pick and choose i gotta choose my battles wisely so me being so vocal about it on social media. I don't know if you've noticed. I've kind of took a couple steps back. It doesn't uh, mean that that I'm sitting on my hands, but I realize that not everybody understands the context in which I grew up. You know what I'm saying? They don't understand that because where they're where they're from, brown people are. Uh, they they're on their side and they don't integrate neither do they show that they care you know what i'm saying especially people from the west like out west they, it, there's racial wars when i went out west and i found out that black dudes ain't like spanish dudes i'm like what for real and mexicans don't like puerto ricans and, Chi and asians don't like i'm like yo this is like racism times 10 out here they yeah. deal with that every day where i'm from it ain't like that we all together, we in the same projects, you know what I'm saying? So um, understanding that and knowing that not everybody understands my position, I kind of like, you know what, bro, let me just fall back and stay shut for once because will my voice add any value or will it just be thrown into the chaos and cause more confusion? Like, Right, that's important. Yeah, you you have like such a niche like experience as, yeah, yeah, as yeah. far as far as things go. Yo, bro, and when you're on the east, you think your experience is like everybody else's. Like, 
Yeah, so when when I'm out in Chicago and I'm saying that and I'm dropping the N word, I'm, they looking at me like, or oh, when I'm in Detroit, I remember you know being with D12, and one of the 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 first things Bazaar said was like, look, there's just two things you do before we go upstairs. Don't be banging your hood and don't say the N word. We were like, what? Why? Like, we Puerto Rican, but in their context, it's only white and black in Detroit. So if you ain't black, you don't use the N word. Like, so I, I started to see as I traveled, like, yo, it's not like that. And then you tend to forget, you know. So right now, as I speak up, I've I've been in the same comment section. Like right. been challenged by white dudes. Oh, you're doing this for the clout, trying to be a social justice <laughs> warrior. And then it's the black dude, like, why your um, why is your voice important? Who the heck are you? But then you know, I got some of my black bros in there defending me, like, yo, shut up, bro. Like, you know what I'm saying? So I was just like, man, this this I think this is doing more damage as far as social media yeah. speaking up than so I'd rather just put my hands to the plow than just be. Yeah, it, it's like it's like Bree said towards the end. Literally, our whole world and culture is shaped by where you were born and why your skin color wound up that way. Yeah. And that's how that's how we've delegated millions of people all over the world just because of something so so simple and some really so dumb, just as that. Yeah. Um, it's yeah. it's pretty wild. Now I feel like your track top speed running is pretty prophetic. You got mm -hmm. some prophetic words in there. Um, so can you maybe like break down your verse and apply that to what's going on now? All I hear is fake news, fake news. Democracy is an illusion. Presidents and puppet state choose. So I'm very vocal about that. You, you got your pro Trump, you got your pro uh, uh, this dude. Dem I'm neither Democrat or Republican. Right. I pray for whoever, whatever leader is put into office, whether Democrat or Republican. But I, I do not. Just because you have some traits or some some of your policies are in alignment with some of my beliefs. If it's not all I, I can't co-sign it, I can just pray. I feel like. Yo, democracy is, a, is an illusion. We're, we feel it, like choosing, we, we think we have the ability to choose, but you're only choosing from the pot that they put in front of you. You got it, choice A or B, you know what I'm saying? So right. that's what I meant. I bet you the comments are going to light up because everybody disagrees with that, but there's this just my beliefs and I feel a piece about it. So You're getting a lot of hearts right now, actually. All right, so, I'm cool. So, so this, I, this is a show of love. This is... Yeah. This, this is episode 10. If they don't know the deal by now, then I, I, then I don't know what everyone's doing. I, I got to go walk over there and make sure it ain't my wife on the on the phone and, and you know, she's tuned in and pressing. That's all right. Hearts. That helps. We'll take, <laughs> we take, we take all those hearts. Nah, um, but yeah, so I said democracy is, is an illusion. Presidents are puppets. They choose. They prove to be unfaithful. They promise breakthrough. They bait you. Then get your hopes up but never make moves. While the poor people struggle just to make do, the rich get richer. They be grubbing with their plates full. They're not for the people at the. They're not for the people at the bottoms where they place you. It's always in their favor when our leaders legislate rules. It, together we're a force, but that but that ain't the case, dude. Bring the politics, we get to acting like the apes do, picking sides left and right, arguing debate views, fighting over people that don't love us. So disgraceful. You know what I'm saying? So sounds a lot like what's happening. Yeah. yeah. And, yo, and I wrote that. I wrote beforehand. that. Beforehand. I know you beforehand. wrote that way before. I wrote that before COVID went down and all of that, bro. That's that's why I wanted to ask you about it. And I was going through your, your Instagram, you know, getting ready for my questions and my research or whatever. And I saw you posted that semi recently. Um, and I was like, yo, this this album came out a while ago. I was like, yeah. this is this is crazy. And also, you know, every time I get you on an interview, I always get you to rap something. And you're the yeah. only one. You're the only one. <laughs> I like I like con you into into rapping a whole verse about, <laughs> about something. I just have to do it. Um, so have you have you been able to actually do anything outside of using your platform 
whether it be going to protest or being part of like community dialogue, you know, even like a food, giving out food with your church, like just anything like yes, that. Yes, yes, yes. Definitely uh, uh, giving out food with my church. Um, definitely loving on the people. Um, as far as the protesting, I got to join Urban D and and um, mm. and and uh, uh, Crossover Church out in Tampa. He's my only connect. I'm new to this area, so yeah, I'm still not plugged in. I still ain't get up with Loso. I still ain't get up with the local rappers. I ain't get up with KB. I saw KB there. That's it. Like I still ain't make my rounds. That's how new I am here. So um, yeah, I, I got it in with them. We prayed for the community. Um, and now moving forward with my church and all and and all that, we, there's some plans that are going to be made. Um, aside from that, no. Aside from that, no. I'm I'm trying to figure this thing out. It's frustrating to me because in Orlando, right? Um, I was I just when I started to get plugged in, then yeah. you know I moved. Um, and then in Jersey, it, it's. It's the epicenter over there. It's ground zero. So it's like, I can't even go back and get active because nothing's popping out there. You know what I'm saying? They're shut down. Yeah, this um, whole New York City area is just... Like, yeah. I know you're you're very familiar, obviously, with New York City, too, just being from Newark. And you're talking about, like, nobody in Times Square. Like, being able to drive from Staten Island into the city in 35 minutes instead of an hour and a half. Yeah. And it's just... It's wild just to see yeah. it's like a ghost town. I'm I'm actually going uh back up north for the first time in a long time on Saturday and going to see what happens while we over there. You know what I'm saying? We're going with with a, a, a purpose that's not that doesn't have anything to do with protesting or anything like that. But um as I go out there as I link with my bros, we're gonna see what happens. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You you're gonna see it's like a it's it's going to be so weird, man, coming, yeah. coming home to that. Yeah. Um, so where, where do you feel that, that just from your observations that Christians in the church can maybe do a better job when like there's a whole community in turmoil? Uh, I, I think some people need to withhold too many opinionated people with sloppy, stupid, foolish opinions, trying to add mm -hmm. it to the mix. Um, and and the, the, the best way to be most effective is to be compassionate, to share the compassion of Jesus Christ, whether you agree or disagree. You can even, if your goal, if your overall goal is to shift the perspective of the person you're reading their post, ask questions mm -hmm. and maybe just diving in with accusations. You're this, you're that, boom, boom, boom. I, I think... And I've, I've written about this. What I'm seeing is many of us error. We're making errors from our, our own blind spots. It's like, if I don't see it, it doesn't exist. It, so if it's now, for example, both black and white, this is from both black and white. I'm seeing and, and Hispanic. Mm -hmm. You'll have the black dude, one of the guys that challenged me, right? And I, I promise you, bro, I go on my man's page who's challenging me. He doesn't have one picture with another African-American besides his parents in one. It's, it's all white folk. He goes to praise God. They love him. He goes to a, a, a predominantly white church. He's like me and my church brothers. You know what I'm saying? And it's like he's like the only black dude. And he doesn't experience this. He receives genuine love from white folk who, who love the Lord. They love him. Uh, he probably lives in a, a predominantly white area and doesn't experience racism. So his attack towards me was like, yo, you're feeding into the agenda. This is mm -hmm. lies. This racism doesn't exist. I'm black. You're not. Shut up. And I'm like, my dude, like, yo, I'm from North New Jersey. I've, bro, I've seen how, first of all, there was no, I never went to school with a white kid. It was just black and just Puerto Rican. And then later Dominicans came. It was just us. No Mexicans, no, no, no. I can't even remember an Asian kid, right? All the teachers, mostly white. 
All the cops grow when I was growing up, mostly white. When we went to the next town over, Belleville, that had all the cool stuff, and we wanted to get away from the hood, we would go to Belleville, that's a predominantly a white town, and we would experience racism. You know what I'm saying? Especially, especially my black bros. There's a, a there's a tear to this racism thing, right? Mm -hmm. There's even a Hispanic privilege where it's like, oh, you know, I'll take the beaner over the black dude. Like uh, he, I'll give the Spanish kid a pass before I will the black dude. And I, I can, I, I remember being pulled over by the cops. I hope I'm not rambling. I remember being pulled over by the cops and clearly seeing a difference between how they treated me and them. They were still mean to me. Put your hands on the car. And then to my dude who's, who's six feet tall with dreads, put your mother mm, hands on the mm, with a poor woman, slammed them up. Like, why? What? What'd he do that I didn't do? Why he getting slammed up? So anyways, there's, there's levels to this thing. And I've seen it firsthand. So to tell me it doesn't exist, you look absolutely stupid to me. You look stupid. You look foolish. You're, 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 your ignorance is on display. So and consider that. Consider other, other people's experiences may not be like yours. And ask questions, dialogue, be sympathetic towards them, be compassionate. Yeah. Your brothers and your sisters are hurting. They're hurting. Imagine how traumatizing it is. Look at this, right? I got PTSD. Whenever I get pulled over by the cops, my heart beats and everything. And I got to remind myself, bro, I ain't riding dirty no more. I ain't got weed or coke that I'm selling. I ain't got no pistol. None of that. That's just years ago, right? Yeah. But it's the PTSD. I freak out like how I used to freak out. But I freak out because I don't want a ticket and I don't want like, oh my God, they're going to catch on. Oh, and then I calm down. Oh, I'm, I'm legit. I've never got pulled over and had to worry about Will I die right now? Will they kill me right now? Right? I got mm -hmm. bros that are twice the men that I am, as far as being established, family men, good guys, ain't got the temper I got, love the Lord, like I aspire to be like them. And they get pulled over and worry about, will today be the day I get shot by a police officer? That's a reality. So you know how disrespectful you sound when you say it's just an agenda, it's all a lie? That's disrespectful. That's mad disrespectful. That's people's realities. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. just because you don't know any of them don't make you right. No, absolutely. And I have like, I have a totally relatable on that because look at me and, and look at you. I'm also, I'm Puerto Rican also. We look entirely different. I'm very white looking. I walked into a room with somebody I'm like, oh, look, look at the tall white kid, the six foot two white kid. Why, why is he wearing a Puerto Rico hat? And like totally different person. I have a ton of family. I have a, a huge Puerto Rican family. They all grew up in Newark and, and Bloomfield. So that whole area around you, which is a totally different place than Staten Island, where I grew up around all white people had maybe like two Puerto Rican friends my whole life, but that also grew up around white people. And I can go with my cousins in Bloomfield or Newark, and it's a totally night and day situation like you're talking about. I'll never know what it was like for them to experience things growing up because this is the way I've been raised in Staten Island as opposed to Jersey. Um, yeah. So I totally get that. Yeah, I got when when I had my little situation with the police officers, it was with Bloomfield police and, and Bloomfield is a lot of white people. It's mixed, yeah. but it's not as bad not as, as, mixed as, as Newark. Newark. And yeah, not it, it's not as bad as as Newark. So when us Newark kids come out of Newark and go into Bloomfield, we getting checked, we getting pulled over, we getting frisked, we getting beat up. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, no, that's wild. Now yeah. For for you, I guess for anyone who's kind of going through it right now, uh, just unsure of how to cope or what to do, like what would be your word of encouragement for people going through this time? I would say, man, if we get a proper perspective of life's purpose, right, 
um, then what goes on over here, every obstacle, because obstacles will come in different forms, but you'll know how to brush them off the same. Mm -hmm. Your life is but a breath. You're here today, you're gone tomorrow. What matters is what's to come. What matters is what's to come. And, and you will find out what's to come depending, up, depending upon what you, you've made your God while you're here, right? Trust in the Lord, right? I said this on the, my Instagram the other day because I was in 2 Corinthians chapter 11 and I'm, I'm watching Paul talk. I'm reading Paul. He's talking to, to the Corinthians and there's mm -hmm. the part where he starts to list the things that he's been through. Like, oh, those super apostles, they're... they're they're Hebrews. Well, I'm even more. And then he started, I got, I got a, a, a stone. I got beat with rods three times. I received 39 lashes five times. All these things he's went through. And why didn't he give up? Why didn't he just say, oh, this is hard times. I can't deal with it. Why would God let this happen? His eyes were fixed on the goal. He was pressing on what was ahead. Pressing towards what was ahead. So all those difficulties that came, I'm sure he faced racism. I'm sure mm -hmm. he faced persecution. You see it, beatings, near-death experiences. He will shrug them off. That doesn't minimize your pain, right? If you're going through pain, you're going through these things. It does not minimize your pain. I'm not saying shut up and brush it off. Mourn, the, mourn these things. But keep your eyes fixed on the goal that is ahead and pursue Jesus Christ because this, you can spend your next 10 days bitter mm -hmm. and mad at God and mad at, at the world because things don't look how you want them to look or things are hard right now. Die and spend an eternity in hell because you've made yourself your God and your emotions your, your God. Um, okay, somebody said... Talk about how bad idolatry is and how it can affect your walk. Idolatry comes in many forms. It comes in, in many forms. And if you think you have this definite definition of what an idol is, that's how not another idol will sneak in. Your idol can be, uh, you know, from materialistic things to a person in your life to your own ideals, your own ideologies. You know what I'm saying? Um, even false doctrines. So, of course, they take you off. The enemy is cra way craftier than we give him credit for. The, the most holy, omnipotent, all-knowing God allowed uh, the writer in the scriptures to write that the serpent is crafty, that the devil's crafty. He's far craftier than we would give him credit. So, um, man, always check your, 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 your heart every day for idols and if you you're saying you don't have any you're lying you, I, I feel bad for you because there's a blind spot because i have to identify them every day it could be this, th these clothes yep. i got it could be my, my music why why am i not spending as much time with the lord and i'm spending more time talking about him instead of talking with him i think andy said a line like that like yo check your heart check your heart Kill those idols, pluck them out every day. God is gracious, and he's gracious enough to provide his Holy Spirit to give you the power to say no to them and chop them down. That's real. That's real. And, and your pain can definitely, somebody put, Cody put, can your pain be your idol? Yes. Yes, I know people that cling to their pain, and it's always me, and they refuse to submit to God fully because they're like, I'm going through this pain and he shouldn't allow me to. So middle fingers up to God. You know what I'm saying? Their, their mm -hmm. pain is their idol. So yes, most definitely. Somebody made a comment and actually this is a great point. In an all white country like the Ukraine, lower class is looked on the same way, but not because of color, but more so of class. I know it's that way, you know, in India, um, in China, many different countries where you're, it's like 99%, you know, of, of one color or whatever, it becomes classism rather than racism. Yes. And I, I, I wouldn't say that racism is uniquely an American problem, but I feel like it's most prevalent um, in America. You know, it's, it's the biggest problem, one of the biggest problems in America, as opposed to other parts of the world. Um, Facts. Don't take my word for that, but I, I feel like that's, that's true. Um, Dre Tough, how do you stay fixed on the prize and what do we need to do as believers? Well, the good thing is like, yo, 
I don't think I got the answers on how to stay fixed on the prize because for it is God who works in you to will and to act according to your good, to, to his good purpose. That's what, what the scripture says. I think that it's just like in order for me to be operated on, I just need to show up and the doctor does the work. Show up, lay on the operating table and the great physician will do the work. Um, so you just need to show up. That means hitting your knees. That means reading his word. You know what I'm saying? Do those, those duties. Never forsake the fellowship of the saints. These are key things. And as we do these things, God is rewarding, man. I just went to go eat with, with uh, uh, two couples from my church yesterday. And man, it's just like we was eating, chopping it up, having fun. And then like maybe 15 minutes turned into this real godly conversation. Mm -hmm. And I feel like, wow, that was extremely edifying for me. And then my wife receives a text from one of them like, yo, we love y'all. We were definitely blessed. So God does something when we're, we're, it says when two or three have gathered together in his name, he's there in the midst. There, there's, he's always with us. We have his Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? He's always with us. But something amazing happens when we congregate together. And that's why we're instructed to. So as we do these things, these things help you fix your eyes on the goal, on the mark of what you need to die to some of those ideas. We need to die to some of our religiosity. Some of us need to retrain and relearn God because we've been taught about the Lord in such a toxic way. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So um, some of those things need to die and those ideas need to submit to scripture. If they don't look like scripture, Yo, do away with them. And then you need to be open to, am I reading scripture from the lens that they've already placed on me? My pastor, Sweet. my, my yep. denomination, my, they've placed this, my friends. And now you're seeing what they're preaching because they've taught you how to see it like them. But now when you read scripture in its context, right? Sometimes we do, I'm just going to do a chapter a day. That's not, I mean, yo, do that over not doing Nothing. anything yeah right deal because i started like that i started like that people be like how you know scripture i will read 15 minutes at lunch and that's how i started but anyways so read read a book read the, the the whole entire book so you're getting the full context sometimes your eyes need to do away with even the headlines in your bible for the next chapter do away with that headline because you're already reading that that chapter through that lens Read it. Just read it all together. Let it flow. You're just like, man, you know what? What pastor said, don't make no daggone sense when I'm reading it in its context. You know what I'm saying? Right. That's good, man. Shout, shout out to my pastor. That's not an issue, but yeah. you know. <laughs> uh, what does the 11th hour mean to you? And how do you fish for men in the dark season? Um. Man, the eleventh hour is, is 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 the next minute, the next minute, the next minute. I can drop dead right now of a stroke. You know what I'm saying? Of uh, I oh I'm. It's when I got saved, I was handed war clothes, and that was the eleventh hour. And it's been thirteen years since, and I'm gonna live every minute like it's the eleventh hour. Uh, that's what that means to me. Being saved, you're the, in the 11th hour. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Um, and what was the next question? Uh, how do you be fishers of men in the dark? Yo, in the darkness? Be sensitive to the Holy Spirit, man. I, I don't always do the best job and sometimes I do great jobs. Or, you know, if you're out and you feel pressed upon by the Lord to, to, to minister to somebody, do it. And if you drop the ball, you know, don't beat yourself up. He's just looking for somebody willing to say yes. There's been times where he's been like, speak to him. And I have. And there's been times where he's been like, yo, talk to them. And you'd be like, nah. And then you <laughs> drop the ball and you mess up. No, oh, God, not right now. You know what I'm saying? But um, yeah, just, just be intentional. Just say yes. Send me, I'll go. You know what I'm saying? And if you're going to say, send me, I'll go, when you're told to go, then you better go. Because a lot of people say, send me, then go. And they're like, all right, I'm going to send you here. And then you're like, oh, but yeah, but I didn't, I didn't want to go there. 
bro, it's happened to me. It's happened to me. It's happened to me mad times. And then it's and then I've seen the fruit of reversing it. I remember walking past somebody and this big old dude, he looked smoking a blunt. And he walked past me and God's like, simple as day. I just feel like the Lord is like, tell him I love him. And I'm like, nah, I'm good. <laughs> and I walk right past dude, right? And I'm I look like a herb. I'm dressed at, at for work. I had a a button up and khakis, and I'm like, bro, I'm not trying to talk to this dude. I walk past him, go to my work van, and I repent, and I'm like, God, I'm sorry. I'm like, man, Lord, if he's there, I'll stop the van, and I'll tell him. And sure enough, I'll pull, I'll pull around the corner, and my man is sitting there smoking a the blunt. I'm like, dang. So I just pull over, and I'm like, look, bro, it's going to sound mad weird, just like that. Now, no, excuse me, sir. I'm like, yo, bro, this going to sound mad weird, but I promise you I'm not no weirdo, but uh, Jesus loves you. He got a plan. He got a purpose for you. I'm thinking in my mind, I got to go into some like theological discussion or really try to witness, but that's all he said, right? All he said to do, I tell him Jesus loves you. He got a plan and a purpose for you, and you know he's been calling you, but you've been dodging him. He goes... Yo, God really said that? And I'm like, yeah. And he was like, dang, man, thank you, bro. I do feel like God has been calling me. Wow. So I'm like, yo, I take off. And then you feel like a million dollars because you were obedient. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I've seen when you question, like, yo, I'm going to sound stupid. This is going to sound stupid. I'm going to be rejected. And then look at his response. You know what I'm saying? So I should have got his number. I punked out. You know what I'm saying? It's like, yo. Let's exchange numbers. I, I'm just not good with strangers like that. There's probably yeah. fans in here that showed up to, the, to my merch table and I'll be awkward sometimes. Like, eh, it all depends on my mood. If I'm in control of the atmosphere, I'm blah, 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 blah. If I'm awkward, I'm awkward. Like, hey, how you doing? All right. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Here's the last question from God. Here's the humble. And then I, I will let you go. Uh, how do you think God being no respecter of persons, I'm assuming you mean just doesn't care about what you look like relates to black lives matter slash the woke movement. And what would you say to those in and out of the church as it relates to that? Uh, man, I got too much to say about that. Um, so if he's no respecter of persons, that that's the argument for a lot of people that want to denounce the sentiment of black lives matter. Right. I think, like, yo, let, let me, let, I can't stress this enough. I don't care what, who it offends. Yo, mm -hmm. the organization Black Lives Matter could kick rocks. They satanic. They satanic. I spit on it. I don't want nothing to do with it. Right? Mm -hmm. but, but the sentiment Black Lives Matter. There's people I know who are screaming Black Lives Matter that know nothing about the organization. Right, right. You feel me? And I feel them. So if you're going to use God is not a respective, a respective persons to denounce Black Lives Matter. So what is he a respective of persons on the opposite side for for the, the white community? Because all the Black Lives Matter is saying, hey, hey, we feel like we're not we don't matter. And we're just here to remind you that God is not a respecter of persons. So we do matter, too. Mm -hmm. That's that's the sentiment. You know what I'm saying? Now, if you look into the roots of if anyone here is offended about what I said about the organization, just do your research. Stop, stop, stop gobbling up what everybody feeds you. Go mm -hmm. to their website and see their mission statement, what they believe. It's freaking demonic. It's satanic. And if you disagree, we can't have a discussion. I can't respect your intellect. It's demonic. But now I'm able to separate the two. And I can see that people come in agreement with the sentiment. And I'm telling you, it's like, bro, most people I have met know nothing about its origin as an organization or mm -hmm. its mission statement. They just be like, hey, yeah, I feel like Black Lives Matter too. You know what I'm saying? So yep. they stand up for it. Um, you know how many times, like just in, in my little, my little, that little period where I was being very vocal about this, where I, I hashtagged that joint and just deleted it. You know what I'm saying? It's like, yo, I agree with the sentiment, but I understand that 
Some people right, aren't right. mature enough to be able to dif differentiate the two. And then they're going to be like, oh, you, you're, you know, yoking yourself with this and this and this and this when I don't concern myself with it. They're not important enough to me for me to, to yoke myself with what they're doing. I agree with the sentiment. And, and I feel like that question to end it up, if God is not a respecter of persons, then it is very okay for the person that doesn't feel respected to stand up and remind everybody, hey, God is not a respecter of persons. We matter too because we don't feel like we matter. Nice. And, and to add to what you said, I can't tell you how many times I've had that same discussion where I could have talked 45 minutes, an hour about the separation of the two. And then at the end of the conversation, they're like, yeah, but that group is Marxist. And I'm just like, oh, like you're not hearing anything. And those are the people that you just you can't you can't tell them anything. It's insane. Well, when, when you work retail and you and you got a social media, just you you see how naive mm -hmm. and unintelligent people really are It's beyond your wildest dreams you have never imagined somebody as stupid as and i, I know <laughs> it's very offensive but there are some people that you i can't believe like yo you can't be this dumb you can't be this dumb and they're that dumb like so you just be like man it, they're there don't be surprised at this point i'm trying to Remind myself that, ah, uh, you know, it's another one of those and I'm not going to feed it any mind because I think of all the Christian rappers, I probably do the worst job at that. You know what I'm saying? I see how I, I look at Andy's comments and Lecrae's and they not responding to none of this stuff. And I'd be convicted because it'd be a hundred comments where they're, they're, yo, man, this blesses me. This blesses me. And I Seven like one. them. But yeah. it's the one that be like, yo, you're a demon, you're da 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 da, and he's the one that gets the response. And I'm like, nah, I gotta stop that. They're not worth it, there. Um, all right, so real quick plug, you know, where everyone can follow you, find your music, uh, you know, hit everyone with that. Yo, three months ago, I dropped an album called CHH Ain't Dead Volume One. It's out. I dropped a new single with my man Fern titled Did It A Lot. It's going to be mm -hmm. on Volume Two of CHH Ain't Dead. That's out. Still, all this new music. My man Naladeus, my new artist on Menace Movement, just dropped a new single produced by Daniel Steele. That's out too. Uh, check it out. Yo, Coop, what up, bro? Um, man, uh, follow me at Dayton, D A T I N underscore. Triple D spelled out T R I P L E D. Um, check out all the new music. What's up on the loose? Um, I got a yo, and I got this top secret EP that I'm working on with. I can't say who. It's not no oh, little. Man. I'm just gonna say it's with a top tier C H H artist. Um, it's a very unlikely. Nobody's gonna expect this collab, but we working so. You might have some music really, 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 really soon. Yeah. If you don't hit me on the Telegram with that info when we get, I will. Out, I, will. I'm not, I will. I'm not. I'm not inviting you on these I, things no I more. I got you. I got, but you got to keep it on the low though. Yeah. Come on. Come on. We yeah. good. Yeah. All right, bro. Thank you so much. I appreciate you, man. And see, you did have something to say. You have plenty to say. Yo, you bro, always, he was killing you, it, bro. You always do, though. You always do. I knew you. I knew you. I knew you'd come up with something. Bree killed it. Shout out to D Swan as well, who opened Shout the show out to up. Swan. Again, everyone, thank you for tuning in. Dayton, thank you, man. And uh, I can't wait to see what you got coming. God bless. Peace. God bless. Peace, bro.